Hey, remember when Rogue One trailers came out and the internet went, ooh, we figured out who Rey's mom is? Do we have any updates on that? Yeah, it might be time to rethink that one. Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows the chances of one of my Star Wars theories successfully navigating the asteroid field of the internet are 3,720 to 1. But you know what? Just can't help myself. You know, loyal theorists, it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong, and, uh, yeah, I've been kinda wrong once or twice when it comes to Star Wars. Evil Luke in Force Awakens, strike one. Rogue One Squadron turning into the Knights of Ren, yeah, that was a big strike too. Although that one should've been right. A wiser man might've learned his lesson by now, but if I was really that wise, I probably wouldn't own the prequels on Blu-ray. Don't you judge me, it's for the sake of completeness. Anyway, with Star Wars season just around the corner and the recent release of The Last Jedi's official trailer, I am in full Star Wars hype mode. I'm happier than a porg in whatever porgs enjoy. I don't know, it's just a new creature designed to sell toys. A, a, a porg plush at a Target retailer near you. Anyway, I recently rewatched The Force Awakens, and after I breathed my sigh of relief that no Gungans had found their way into it, cause you never can tell with these movies, I was struck by how many questions it leaves open. Who is Snoke? Why did the First Order build a giant Death Star with essentially the same weakness as the original Death Star? What is that insta-bread that Rey makes for dinner, and where can I get some because it looks delicious? But seriously, the biggest biggest question has to be Rey herself. Who the heck is this girl? It's a question the internet latched onto in the aftermath of this movie, and it's one that we all know is gonna be answered by The Last Jedi. So if I'm gonna put my fiery hat into the ring, I better do it now. Who are Rey's parents? The internet has explored this one to its fullest. I think if I look hard enough, I could probably find someone who claims that she's the daughter of C-3PO and a Jawa. But today I'm gonna prove to you which is the correct choice. In fact, I am so confident in this theory that I'm gonna say spoiler alert right here. Yeah, spoiler alert for a movie that has not been released yet. I don't necessarily believe all my theories, but today I think I have this one nailed. And I think by the end of this episode, you're gonna agree with me too. So make sure you stay through the whole episode, then let me know at the end in the comments if you think that I got it. Now dust off your sensible sweaters and DNA test kits, ladies and gentlemen, because Matt Povich is here to tell some of these dudes that you are not the <laughs> father. To begin, let's establish the details we know about Rey that'll help us reach our conclusion. 1. She was left on Jakku as a small girl and hasn't seen her family since. 2. She's a talented pilot, even a natural. And 3. She speaks with a British accent. Despite receiving no training, that we know of anyway, she's able to use a lightsaber and Jedi mind trick a stormtrooper, suggesting that she is 4. Incredibly sensitive to the Force. 5. Luke's lightsaber calls to her in Maz Kanata's castle. And 6. Let's remember that classic George Lucas quote that the Star Wars story is, quote, like poetry, it rhymes. So we need a lineage that not only fits the characteristics we know about Rey, but also the thematic elements of the saga in general. Okay, with our main criteria established, let's make a case for Bachelor number one, from what I can tell the internet's current betting favorite, Luke Skywalker. A lot of the parallels here are pretty obvious. Rey and Luke both grew up on desert planets raised by people other than their parents. They both join up with Han Solo and then battle against a family member. Remember, Kylo Ren would be Rey's cousin if she's Luke's daughter, who offers to teach them in the ways of the dark side. So, you definitely have a big check mark in that whole rhyming story category. Then you have the fact that Luke's lightsaber calls to Rey, seeming to suggest a family bond or shared unity. Now, even though Rey and Luke don't talk to each other at the end of The Force Awakens, we do get some interesting tidbits from the screenplay. Quote, he looks at Rey, a kindness in his eyes, but there's something tortured too. He doesn't need to ask her who she is or what she's doing there. His look says it all, end quote. I know the Force is strong with Luke and all, but some girl just finds him while he's brooding on a cliff and he doesn't need to ask her who she is? That probably means he recognizes her, which he would if she were his long-lost daughter. This is also supported by the crucial line used in trailers for Force Awakens. The Force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. You have that power too. It definitely seems like this is something Luke would be saying to Rey, and if that's the case, he would be implicitly looping Rey into his family as yet another strong Force user. We even get a few hints from outside the movies. At a panel discussion with the cast of The Force Awakens, Mark Hamill teased the relationship by saying, I see my, I mean my colleague. <laughs> 
Daisy. Now it's absolutely possible that Grampy Skywalker is just trolling the audience, but there is such a thing as hiding in plain sight. But maybe the best clue we get comes from Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, who gave an interview to the Costco Connection in October 2015 in which she stated, quote, The saga films, by which she means the original trilogy, the prequels, and now the new trilogy, focus on the Skywalker family saga, end quote. Now, while I'm generally skeptical of the things I read in newspapers printed by stores that sell 30-pound buckets of mayonnaise, this is pretty hard to ignore. If we're saying that episodes 7, 8, and 9 are about the Skywalkers, and that the story rhymes, it makes plenty of sense that Rey would take the torch from Luke as his daughter. But as the internet's pointed out, this is far from the only possible explanation. If you want to talk about Force-sensitive loners living on desert planets, well then meet Bachelor number 2, Obi-Wan Kenobi. That lightsaber that called to Rey? Let's not forget that before it was Luke's, it was Obi-Wan's. And when Rey has her Force vision, we hear the voices of both Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor, the two actors who've played Obi-Wan. Also, Rey speaks with a British accent. If she's a Skywalker, it's hard to say where that would have come from, but if she's descended from the Kenobis, well, no explanation necessary. And then when it comes to pure Jedi style, Rey closes her eyes when she's in a lightsaber duel, just like Obi-Wan did. She even uses Obi-Wan's famous Jedi mind trick as one of her first realizations of her powers. True, this would mean that Rey isn't exactly part of the Skywalker saga that Kathleen Kennedy mentioned, but how interesting would it be for the series to go from a Kenobi training a Skywalker to a Skywalker then training a Kenobi. Certainly fits that whole rhyme test that George Lucas mentioned. All right, all right, it's time to get serious. It's not my job here to hand out gold stars and praise everyone's theories. It's my job to get answers. One problem with Rey being Luke's daughter or Obi-Wan's granddaughter is that it's against Jedi rules. In the Doctrine of the Jedi Order, teaching number four is that Jedi are wary of attachments both material and personal. A lot of the other quote-unquote clues that we just covered can be explained away pretty easily as well. The British accent thing? Maybe Rey just picked that up from Unkar Plutt, the guy she was just left with when she was a small child. I mean, just listen to him. What you brought me today is worth one quarter portion. And sure, it's true that Luke's lightsaber called to Rey and that Obi-Wan's voice is heard during her force vision, but she also sees Darth Vader and hears Yoda. If anything, she's being called by the Force, not a specific family member. So now let's consider a quote from Daisy Ridley herself. After The Force Awakens had opened, Time Out London asked her about her character's backstory. She answered by saying, quote, I thought a lot was answered in The Force Awakens. Then, after the screening, I went for a drink with my agent and everyone, and we were chatting away and I realize that, oh, in their minds it's not answered at all. Consider this, if Daisy Ridley thought a lot had been answered in episode 7, then we're probably looking for more than just a voice in a dream or a knowing look on a cliffside. So I rewatched the movie, and here's a line that stuck with me. Kylo Ren has just captured Rey and is keeping her captive. After mentioning that he doesn't know what happened to her friends, he says, with what sounds like genuine surprise, You still wanna kill me. Still? As in wanted to kill you before? Kylo Ren and Rey just met, but he seems to know who she is based on his reaction to first hearing about her. The two were accompanied by a girl. <laughs> What girl? But how would he know about this random desert planet girl and how powerful she is unless they had shared a common past? Does Kylo Ren know Rey already? Because she's his sister. Yes! Han Solo, you are the father! Wow, he did not take that well at all. But seriously, all the pieces fit. Look at everything that we've covered today. If she's the daughter of Leia, that's where her force powers are coming from. That means that she's Luke's niece, and that lightsaber is still a family heirloom that would be calling out to her. We never get a good explanation as to why Rey was stashed away on Jakku, but look back at Luke's quote from The Last Jedi trailer. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough that it does now. In the middle of it, we see his hand emerge from under some burning rubble, followed by an image of what we can assume is the Jedi Temple that Kylo Ren destroys. It's certainly possible that the kind of raw strength Luke saw before and didn't fear was Kylo's. If Han and Leia realized that her older brother was suddenly becoming very powerful and very evil, they might want to get her away from his influence, i.e. hiding her out on Jakku. Speaking of trailer moments, that line from the Force Awakens trailer about the Force being strong in Luke's family still applies here, it's just now he's saying it to his niece instead of his daughter. The British accent could come from Unkar Plot, or maybe just from her mother's oddly inconsistent British tones in episode 4. The more you tighten your grip, Tarkin, 
The more star systems will slip through your fingers. Episode 7, 8, and 9 can still continue the Skywalker saga, as Kathleen Kennedy put it, by following Rey. And the new trilogy can still rhyme with the original. Two Force-using siblings who were separated as children become reunited, with one having to save the other. The one who lived on an isolated desert planet is mentored by an old Jedi, who just so happens to tweet pictures of himself on her back in a clear allusion to the Yoda-Luke relationship from The Empire Strikes Back. Oh yeah, and that whole natural pilot thing? She had to have gotten some something from her father, Yahtzee! That is all six of our criteria covered, and there is still more. If you are still not convinced, don't worry, because I saved the best for last. Here are three deep dive pieces of evidence that are going to sell you on this theory. Number one, in one of the interviews where Mark Hamill teased the audience about Rey being his daughter, he mentioned that at the initial table read of The Force Awakens, seating was assigned, and that rather than being seated next to him, Daisy Ridley was in between Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. Now, for those of you who don't know, table reads are structured to sit you closest to the people your character shares the closest or most important relationships with. She shares a lot of scenes with Han Solo, so sitting next to Harrison Ford makes sense, but Leia? Not so much. And especially squeezing her in between the two of them is awfully strange if she's not in some way related to them. Point number two, actress Billy Lord, who plays the bit role of Lieutenant Connix in The Force Awakens, originally auditioned for the role of Rey. Why is that fishy? Because Billy Lord happens to be Carrie Fisher's real-life daughter. If you're looking to establish a family resemblance, casting mother and daughter as mother and daughter ought to do it. And here's the biggest, number three. The meme-tastic hug that Leia gives Rey after Han is killed. Leia walks right past Chewbacca, whom she's known for decades, and who is Han's partner for longer than that, instead going straight to comforting Rey a girl she would have never met before. There's a reason why the internet ripped into this moment. It's insane, it's stupid, it's silly, until you consider that Leia might be Rey's mother. And looking at the screenplay gives us even greater cause for suspicion. Quote, the two women move for each other, and Leia takes Rey's face in her hands. Despite her heartbreak, she's grateful. She embraces Rey. A mother's embrace. Huh. Interesting choice of words there. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory! And may the force be with you. These are not the droids you're looking for. This is the subscribe button you were looking for. This is the subscribe button you were planning on clicking because with the Star Wars TV show coming out, yeah, that's news if you haven't heard that one, you'll want to make sure you're up to date on all the latest theories about the universe. So click it. It's not a trap.